I went into this briefly on uh, the F1 report on Sky earlier this week, um, but I know lots of you uh, either won't have seen it or can't watch it because you're in different territory. So I thought I'd go into a little bit more detail. I've only had about uh, 30 or 40 seconds or so on the show to go into it. Um, so let's get into a little bit more depth about exactly what is Mercedes party mode, as Lewis calls it. If you're a power unit manufacturer in Formula One, you design and manufacture a power unit uh, to give the absolute maximum performance uh, that you can possibly achieve. But you have to temper that, I guess, uh, against the longevity of that power unit. Modern Formula One dictates that you're only allowed a certain number of, of each of the elements of a power unit to last the entire season. So it's actually in the modern era not about all out maximum performance as it used to be, uh, it's about performance weighed up against durability. Uh, and that is where this whole debate about performance modes, qualifying modes, party mode, uh, gets a little bit of context. So the manufacturer of a power unit will deliver their unit, deliver the power unit to their customer team, whether that's a customer outside of the, uh, the in-house manufacturer or, you know, for example, a Mercedes, Mercedes will deliver their power unit to the Mercedes Formula One team and they will deliver it to Williams and to Force India and so on. Uh, when they deliver that, they will also deliver with it a set of instructions, like an instruction manual or a set of guidelines on how the thing uh, should be used. The teams must adhere to those guidelines. Whether you are Mercedes themselves or whether you're Williams or Force India, those guidelines must be adhered to. Essentially, if you break those guidelines, the warranty, warranty it's all null and void. That, that's kind of how it works. So the guidelines kind of allow for a certain amount of usage uh, at different power levels, at different power settings uh, with each element of that power unit. So for example, you may have a certain number of kilometers that you're able to use within the life of an engine at the absolute max power mode, like qualifying mode, for example. And the reason for that is that when you turn everything up as they do in qualifying, uh, it inflicts a certain amount of damage on the engine. Um, you know, wear and tear, uh, they refer to it as damage because if you go over those limits, uh, the engine will be damaged beyond repair or potentially could be. So the damage limits have to be adhered to. Um, so if they've got a set number of kilometers, for example, to run in the high power modes, it's then up to the teams to decide how and when and where they use those high power or quality mode or party mode settings. Now clearly one of the key moments that you want to give absolutely everything from your power unit is that all important lap, uh, particularly in Q3. Um, other teams that are further down the grid, for example, may want to use it in Q2, depending on where you see your performance fitting into the rest of the field. If you don't think you've got a chance to make it through to Q3, Perhaps Q2 is where you want to use it for a Force India or Williams, for example. Um, but it's whenever you want to deliver the absolute maximum lap time you can for that moment. So in Q3, let's take Mercedes as an example, um, get, to, get safely through to Q3, uh, having gone through Q2 um, on the tyres that you want to start the race on, get into Q3, crank it up into your quali mode or party mode. It's a rotary switch on the steering wheel that Lewis or Valtteri uh, is able to, to select, uh, they will select that on their outlap for, for Q3 runs. Um, normally do it for both Q3 runs. Um, although you fully expect your second Q3 run, run to be faster, the drivers and the teams tend to like to get a banker in, which is the early Q3 lap, and to do that in the same power setting as you're going to do your very important final Q3 run is pretty important. Not only to get a good banker uh, lap on the timesheets, but also to get the driver in the groove so he knows exactly what to expect when he comes to the final Q3 run at the end of that session. So what happens when he does turn that switch into party mode? Uh, well, basically what happens is it turns every single part of the power unit, any performance delivery part of the power unit, it cranks it up to 11, if you like. Um, so for example, it's, um, it's a different map. It's a different software map within the, uh, the control system that's pre-programmed in, of course, by the team or by the engine manufacturer. Uh, Lewis turns the dial on the steering wheel um, and essentially it maxes out things like the ignition advance. It gives maximum turbo boost pressure uh, for that lap. 
um, it will maximize everything that, that can come from the electrical side of the power unit so the, the, uh, it will take everything out the battery essentially um, and you might kind of wonder well isn't that isn't that happening all the time in race mode well it's not because in the race of course you need to constantly be thinking about the next lap so you can't completely empty the battery on one lap um, because you need to constantly be thinking about what's coming next harvesting energy making sure you've got some left for the critical point on the following lap well in qualifying certainly in Q3 you don't need to worry about that because it only the only thing that matters is that one single lap um, your Q3 runs so it's all about the one lap so we're, we're maximizing the electrical deployment um, we are maximizing the fuel flow um, making sure that is hard up against the stop limit of 100 kilograms per hour and again you might think well surely that's always the case it's not actually because in the race the teams tend to back that off ever so slightly only to something like 97 or 98 just to make sure you don't trip over the legal limit and incur a penalty like Daniel Ricciardo did in Australia a couple of years ago in doing all those things it does give a significant performance increase uh, from the the power unit in terms of what the driver feels um, you can't of course as I said at the beginning run that for a prolonged period of time because it does start to encroach on those damage limits set by the engine or the power unit manufacturer um, so you get short and sharp bursts qualifying is clearly one of those areas where it's an absolute necessity to get the maximum out to uh, to maximize your grid position the other time that it will almost certainly be used is at the first lap of the race um, people often don't realize that but actually the first lap the start of the race in the first lap is often done or is normally done in uh, in party mode um, the first lap of the race is the biggest and best opportunity in any Grand Prix for affecting an overtake for making up uh, positions because of course at the start of the race everyone's bunched up and close together they're not spaced out as they would be later on in the race uh, making it much harder to overtake so the best chance for, for gaining positions is at the start so once again we'll crank it up into party mode or, or qualifying mode or high performance mode um, we refer to it as qualifying mode quite often because that's when it's most notably used it's actually just the maximum performance mode uh, of the power unit and there might be other occasions during the Grand Prix where you'll be coming up behind somebody you need to put an attack on and the team will give you the, give the driver the instruction uh, to go into that high power mode for a couple of laps to try and have a go at somebody so there are various stages when it can be used not just qualifying the other thing to be clear on is that there isn't just two different modes uh, on these Formula One car power units there's not race mode and qualifying mode and that's it there's an almost endless spectrum of modes that are available to the teams to use at different times and of course they're all pre-programmed in so the engineers can of course change and adapt those uh, to, to suit their own needs over the course of a race weekend um, so it's almost slightly misleading to, to, call, to call it a qualifying mode and race mode because even within qualifying and even within the race there's a whole variety of different modes um, that can turn up or down different elements of the power unit as and when required um, that are all available on the switches on, on uh, Lewis Hamilton or whoever's steering wheel uh, it is so quite a complex uh, scenario complex set of systems um, but one of those areas that you know as a, as a technical type of person I love it's a real strategic um, you know you have to be strategic about the way you use these things um, you know you could save a little bit of the higher power mode for example by not using it uh, in the race or not using it for your first lap in in Q3 or not using it in Q2 for example which might give you an extra lap of usage for example in one of the races where you really desperately need it so there's a there's a long game to think about when you're planning out strategically planning out how and when to use the different modes of these very very complex and sophisticated F1 hybrid power units hope that helps a little bit <laughs> There he goes.